At present, the official advice is not to use the tube unless absolutely necessary to prevent the spread of COVID-19. But it wasn't always like this. In fact, on more than one occasion, the government has deliberately released diseases on the tube. All in the name of science, of course. Our story begins a long way from London, at Porton Down. This notorious laboratory complex, or science park according to Wikipedia, was founded during the First World War to research German poison gas and to develop an effective response in kind. Over the decades, their scope broadened to include other chemical and biological weapons, both for attack and defence. And, to be fair to them, sinister and horrifying though such weapons are, it's a good idea to know what you're up against when some unconscionable scoundrel decides to use them against you. What's a lot harder to excuse is Porton Down's somewhat lax attitude to ethics over the years. In 1942, Porton Down carried out a biological warfare experiment as part of a programme known by the terrifying name of Operation Vegetarian. This experiment involved the detonation of anthrax bombs on Greenyard Island, off the coast of Scotland, killing 80 sheep and rendering the island uninhabitable. It was only following a terror campaign, whimsically called Operation Dark Harvest, which involved leaving infected soil from Greenard at Porton Down and the Conservative Party conference in Blackpool, that the sheep murderers agreed to undertake a decontamination programme. The island was finally pronounced safe in 1990. In 1952, the mad scientists released a plague bomb again off the coast of Scotland, just a few miles off the Isle of Lewis. Porton Down was gambling on the fact that the prevailing winds blew away from Lewis, and fortunately for them the wind didn't change, although it is known that a fishing boat sailed through the pestilential cloud, fortunately with no resulting infection, but following this it was decided that such experiments could not be allowed around the British Isles. So they carried them out in Nigeria instead, because if you're going to conduct evil and unethical experiments, you might as well go the whole hog and throw some racism in there as well. Then, in 1953, there was the horrifying case of Ronald Madison. Human experimentation on volunteer servicemen was standard practice at Porton Down. What was also standard practice was not to tell the volunteers exactly what they were getting into. Madison was dosed with 200 milligrams of the fearsome sarin nerve agent. Following a near-fatal accident some years earlier, the maximum recommended dose was 50 milligrams. Madison began to feel uncomfortable, a wholly expected result. Then witnesses reported that he slumped over the table, and he was rapidly removed from the test chamber. Shortly afterwards, he complained of deafness, collapsed and began to convulse violently. Despite the best efforts of medics on site, just 45 minutes after being dosed, Madison passed away. The exact nature of his death was covered up, the official explanation being that it was simply an accident. So what does all this have to do with the underground? Well, the dubious human experiments by Port and Down weren't limited to servicemen or even volunteers. They were in the habit of releasing chemical and biological agents from ships, planes and lorries to investigate how contamination might spread. The underground, then as now, was considered an important factor in the potential spread of epidemics, so a number of releases were carried out on the network in 1956, then in 1963, then in 1964. I haven't been able to find the exact locations of the 1960s experiments, but the 1956 release was carried out between Tooting Broadway and Collier's Wood on the Northern Line. The agents used in such experiments were, in theory, harmless. 
The bacterium released on the tube was Bacillus globigii, which is in fact known to be an agent of food poisoning and eye infections. One Ministry of Defence report suggested that the elderly, or those with respiratory conditions, may have been harmed by inhaling the bacteria. However, the official position has always been that it was all fine, don't even worry about it, mate. The full truth of what was done to the unwitting human guinea pigs on the tube may never be fully known. Ultimately, it's another shady chapter in the shady history of the Cold War. Officially, the government's biological warfare programme was shut down in the 1950s. Such dangerous agents, as are used at Port and Down today, are kept to research effective countermeasures in the event of an attack on the UK. We may not like it, but such research is sadly a necessity in the modern world. Mind the gap and stand clear of the spores. Hi all. Hope you enjoyed this diseased episode of Tales from the Tube, and I hope you're doing okay in this strange and unnerving time in which we find ourselves. As you might imagine, making videos about the underground is tricky when you can't use the underground for non-essential travel, so thank you for bearing with me. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, comment, whatever takes your fancy. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. And I'll see you very soon for another tale from the tube.